the back. Uh, this is a demonstration class where we would like to uh, help you in understanding how a uh, virtually moving magnetic field can be created without any physical object being moving. If the physics which we talked about in our previous class is clear to you, you can safely skip this video, else we would try to help you understand with the help of graphics and animation in this video. Okay. So, uh, let us look at the screen. Imagine I have a set of uh, bulbs. So, these are bulbs okay, and uh, they are fixed uh, in their location. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 bulbs okay, and they do not move they can only turn on or off. For example, here we see that there are three bulbs which are turned on. These white bulbs, okay, these white bulbs mean that they are on and these gray bulbs mean they are off. Okay. So, out of 10 bulbs, we have uh, three of them on and re remaining off. Now, we can turn these bulbs on and off sequentially in a particular pattern, so that it will look like as if this set of bulbs are moving in one direction like this. Okay. Here you see the bulbs are being turned on and off sequentially in a manner so that let me repeat, so that you have an illusion that the bulb or the lighting arrangement is moving from left to right once again and you might have seen this trick in uh, uh, in uh, in various occasions we use such lights for decorations okay this this is nothing new now let's uh, consider a just a small variety where once again i have a set of 10 bulbs so, so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so on so i have 10 bulbs and the bulbs now can uh, uh, glow with different intensities. Okay. So, they can uh, be very bright like this white, they can be very dark like this black and they can be something in between gray. Okay. So, the bulbs can take three different colors, they do not move, they can only take three colors white, black or grey or we can give them names like this, like this bright color we call as uh, color N, black color we will call color S and the grey in between color neutral color we will call it O or 0. So, the bulbs can take three values N, O or S, they do not move. Now, if we turn these bulbs sequentially between three phases A and O and S, we will once again have an illusion as if this pattern is moving. Let us see how. See, individual bulbs are only cycling. So, let us consider one bulb, it is only cycling through the phase like black, gray, white, gray, black, gray, white, gray, which means O S O A uh, N like that. Okay. So, individual bulbs are only changing its color, changing its phase, but all together they create a illusion as if this the set is moving from left to right. Okay. Now, let us see it with a faster motion like this. Here the bulbs are turning on off and neutral faster and you see as if they are moving. So, this is the basic idea behind creating a magnetic field virtually moving magnetic field without moving any physical object. Okay. So, let us see another demonstration where 
So, this diagram might be familiar to you. We have drawn something similar in our previous class. We have three coils you see 1, 2 and 3. Two coils these two red coils are connected in series and one coil is a separate coil which is this green coil. Now, these two coils they are connected in such a way so that see this, this, this current I am calling as I c. If I c is flowing in this direction then the flux generated by this coil uh, will be upwards and the flux generated by this coil will be in the opposite direction uh, downwards. Okay. If this flux is upwards then this flux will be downwards. So, it is in such a way. So, this coil st starts from here, it goes like this, then it comes like this and it returns through this. Similarly, I have another coil here and these two coils carry current which are 90 degree out of phase. Okay. So, say if this current is positive, then this coil will have a current if I apply say uh, right hand rule, I will see the flux is upwards uh, okay, and mm, okay. So, if, if current is entering like this, the here the flux will be upwards and here uh, I think the connection may be not proper. So, you should connect it in a way so that if this flux is upward, this should be downwards. If this is downwards, if uh, then this should be upwards. Please check whether this diagram is correct or not. Uh, it might have a small mistake. So, the idea is if this flux is upwards, this should be downwards. If this is downwards, this should be upwards check it, check it please yourself. And if a correction is required, please uh, tell that in the forum. Okay. Now, mm, this curve, okay. so this curve, look at only this curve, where I am moving my cursor, this red one. This is the spatial distribution of the flux density so, left to right is the space space from left to right x axis. Okay. So, here we see at some instant the flux density due to this red coil is like this, it is upwards and flux density due to this, uh, this red coil, th this one is downwards here. So, this third graph, this red one indicates the flux density due to this coil. This flux density is here, this flux density is here. Okay. So, this is upwards, you see this is upwards, this is downwards. Now, if I press this button time will increase. So, the here you can see the value of time. Time has increased from 0 to 10 degree, it can go to 20, 30, 40 so on. And as it happens, you see that this flux is changing, it is reducing. So, you see this flux is reducing and then it is becoming negative here and then once again it is reducing to 0 and then positive and so on. Similarly, this flux is also reducing 0, positive, again reducing to 0 and positive as time is increasing. Similar thing is happening to this green flux which is due to this green coil. Okay. So, again you see as time is increasing this flux changes sinusoidally it, it increases then 0 decreases and then 0 then increases so on. The thing to note is that this flux and this flux they are 180 degree out of phase. If this is negative then this is positive. However, this red and green flux they are 90 degree out of phase. 
So, when this is negative, this is almost 0. Now, this is becoming 0 and this is becoming negative. After that, this is becoming positive and this is becoming 0. Then, this is again becoming 0, this is becoming positive. So, the red and green flux are 90 degree out of phase. Okay? So, I think the meaning of this curve and this curve is clear. This is the flux density created by this and this coil and the green uh, curve is the flux density created by this green coil. Now, I can add up these three curves here. This last curve is the sum of these three individual curves. Okay? So, for example, say now at this moment at this instant here I have a negative flux density, here 0, here 0. So, if I add negative with 0 with 0, I have some negative value. So, here you see the summation is negative. Here you see I have some negative value 0 and 0. So, the summation will be 0 plus 0 plus sorry this is positive, 0 plus 0 plus positive is positive. So, here I have a positive value. Now, as time progresses, this 2 becomes 0 and I have only this green one which is negative. So, now if I add you see at this region 0 plus negative plus 0 is negative. Here everything is 0. So, summation is 0. Once again here everything is 0. So, summation is 0. So, the last curve is the sum of this 3. Okay? Okay. So, this is the flux density due to this coil, this is the flux density due to green coil, this is the flux density due to this right red coil and this is the sum. Now, if I increase time, you can see the time value here 280, 290, 300, 350 and then 0. So, it cyclically changes and then this is the sum. So, you see as I increase the time, the sum, so you see the sum, the sum summation is moving from left to right. There is an illusion of the sum being moving from left to right. You see, now the peak is here and the peak is moving like this, it goes out then another peak is coming which is positive, it is moving from left to right and then going out. Then you see another negative peak is coming, moving from left to right, going out. Then another positive peak is coming, moving from left to right and going out. So, this is how the resultant or summation of flux density moves from left to right without any coil physically moving. Okay? So, now I can show you some more funny things. If I make the phase difference between the green and the red current, okay. so previously I had this green and the red current 90 degree out of phase. Now, I have made the phase difference same. So, you see that when this red flux is at its peak, the green flux is also at its peak and as time progresses, they together go to 0 and they together go to negative, again they together go to 0. So, the this difference between this two, uh, the phase of this two flux is now 0 and now if you see the resultant flux, you see that let us see how it is changing? It is not moving at all. Okay? It is only pulsating. So, this is now negative, it is becoming 0, then positive and again then 0, negative, it is, but the peak is at the same region, it is not moving. You see, the peak is not moving or you see this 0 value, this is also not moving it is only pulsating. So, when I make the difference between these two uh, phases 
0, the motion of the resultant flux is gone, it is no longer moving. Similarly, I can make the phase difference between them opposite. So, previously green coil was lagging by 90 degree, now it is leading by 90 degree. Now, if I run this program, you will see that the resultant flux is moving from right to left. Previously, it was moving from left to right, now it was moving, in, now it will moving, move in the opposite direction. So, you see, as time progresses, this peak is going from right to left. See, it is go, it has gone from right to left, another peak is coming, it is again going from right to left another one right to left. Okay. So, by changing this phase angle, I can change the direction of the motion of the resultant flux. So, in this demonstration therefore, we have seen how we can change, how we can create a moving magnetic field without any physical object being moving without any physical magnet being moving or without any coil moving, nothing is moving, only the magnetic field is virtually moving. Okay. So, we will now see another uh, interesting experimental demonstration uh, about this eddy current motoring and braking. And so, we have this simple arrangement. I have a pencil uh, which is kept vertically which acts like a stand for this alumi for this aluminum cylinder. Okay. So, this is the aluminum sheet which is rolled into a cylinder. Okay. You can see this is just the aluminum sheet which is rolled into a cylinder and this is not any magnetic material. I have a magnet so, this is a magnet okay, and this can attract other magnetic materials like uh, keys. So, it attracts a bunch of keys. Okay. So, this is a magnet, but it does not attract this aluminum foil, you see it falls. Once again, you see it falls. So, it is not at all iron or any magnetic material, it is aluminum. Okay. Now, what I do? I just put this aluminum foil on top of this pencil stand. So, I have some uh, transparent tape, co uh, tape covering this side, so that it can, so some cello tape, so it can hang on uh, that cello tape. Now, what I will do? I will hold this magnet this magnet, it, I think you can see this, this black magnet near this uh, cylinder and I will move it without touching the cylinder and you see what happens. The cylinder starts to rotate okay. and I am not at all touching this uh, cylinder at all. So, this is what? This is eddy current motoring. What is the reason? Why is it moving? Because when I am, when I am moving this magnet near this say near this aluminum uh, cylinder. Okay. So, if I move near this, it will cause some flux lines intersecting this uh, aluminum cylinder. So, it's a, some EMF will be generated in it, some eddy current will be created and this eddy current will flow in such a direction, so that it will try to oppose the relative motion between these two. Okay. According to Lenz's law, no relative motion should be there between these two, okay. no relative motion. So, Lenz's law tells me that the force will act in a direction, so that the relative motion will try to get eliminated. So, now, similarly I can show you another experiment where say I, I rotate it first. 
sorry. So, let me rotate it. You see it keeps rotating for a while. Okay? It keeps rotating for a while, but now if I rotate it and bring this magnet close to it, it stops immediately. Once again, let us do it. Sorry, not that turbulent I should do it. So, it is rotating now, bringing it close, it stops. Once again, rotating, bringing it close, stops and if I do not bring it close, it rotates for a long time, longer time, it, it, it keeps rotating and as soon as I bring it, it stops. What is this? This is eddy current breaking. Why? Once again, the, according to the Lenz's law, the eddy current induced in this aluminum cylinder will try to eliminate the relative velocity or relative motion between the magnet and this cylinder. So, if you try to rotate the cylinder without rotating the magnet, it will get stopped that is eddy current breaking and if you rotate the magnet without rotating the cylinder, the cylinder will also rotate that is called eddy current motoring. So, uh, thank you for uh, watching these demonstrations. We have learnt two important physical phenomena in this video, namely number one is that relative motion between a conductor, non-magnetic conductor and a magnet is not allowed. In a sense, if you, if you create a relative motion between them, eddy current will be induced in the conductor which will try to oppose the relative motion. And the other phenomena which we have seen previously is that we can create virtually moving magnetic field without moving any physical object, okay? without moving any magnet physically like I am doing now, I can create a virtually moving magnetic field by using varying current AC current which we have seen in the previous demonstration. Thank you.